हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अपाचे काफका ट्यूटोरियल एट लर्निंग जर्नल सो फार वी कवर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ थ्योरी एंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अपाचे काफका बट काफका इज मोर अबाउट एपीआईज यू कैन क्लासिफाई काफका एपीआईज इन टू टू पार्ट प्रोड्यूसर एपीआईज एंड कंज्यूमर एपीआईज इन दिस सेशन वी विल कवर इंटरनल्स ऑफ प्रोड्यूसर एपीआईज एंड ऑल्सो क्रिएट एन एग्जाम्पल प्रोड्यूसर By the end of this session you will have a sound understanding of Apache Kafka producer API and you should be able to code your producers so let's start i think by now you already know that we can use kafka in several ways we can use kafka to solve complex data integration problems we can use kafka to create a series of validations transformations and build complex data pipelines we can use it to record information for later consumption for example recording click streams we can use it to log transactions and create applications to respond in real time we can also use it to collect data from your mobile phones smart appliances and sensors in an iot application but if you look at any of these use cases it is all about asynchronous communication among applications so whatever we do with kafka we must have a producer that will send data to kafka you need to create a producer for your application to send data to kafka the most common method to create kafka producer is using kafka apis since core apis are available in java you must know java to be able to understand and use them however even if you are not in day to day java coding you can still understand the concept and internal working of kafka during this session so let's directly jump into some code here is the code for simplest kafka producer so this is the package that defines apache kafka client api If you are interested in looking at the source code it's available on GitHub You can google the GitHub project very quickly but I have added the link in the description You may also need to refer API documentation a link to API doc is also available in the description Okay in this example we want to send a string message to Kafka It is a simple java string most of the time Kafka messages are key value pairs so with every message you can send a key however the key is not mandatory you can send a message without a key as well but in this example we want to send the key and a value and we want to send it to this topic if you look at the code there are only three steps step 1 create a kafka producer object and step 2 create a producer record object and finally the step 3 is to send the record to the producer that is all that we do in a kafka producer so let's look at the details of each step the first step is to create a kafka producer object to create this object you need a property object with at least three mandatory configurations These core configurations are bootstrap servers, key serializer and value serializer. I hope you already know bootstrap servers. It is a list of Kafka brokers. The producer object will use this list to connect to Kafka cluster. You can specify one or more brokers in the list. The recommendation is to provide at least two brokers. So if one broker is down the producer can connect to the other broker from the list The next two properties are about Kafka message I already mentioned in an earlier video that Kafka doesn't have any meaning for the data It is just an array of bytes for Kafka In this example we are sending a string key and a string value but kafka accepts only an array of bytes so we need a class to convert our message key and value into an array of bytes the activity of converting java objects into an array of bytes is called serialization 
So these two properties are to specify an appropriate serializer class for the key and value. In this example, we are using a string serializer for both key and value. Kafka also provides some other serializers like int serializer or double serializer. If you want to send an integer key, you should use an int serializer for the key instead of a string serializer. We will cover serializers in detail in another session. So we define these three mandatory configurations and package them into a Java properties object. Then we pass the properties object to Kafka producer object constructor and instantiate a producer. That was our first step. Before I move to the second step, let me highlight these two Java generics parameter. The first one is the type of key and the second one is the type of value. So if you are changing data types of your key or values, you should change this also. Okay, so we are done with the first step and now you have a producer instantiated. We want this producer to send some messages. So the second step is to create a producer record object. The producer record object requires three things, the topic name, key and message value. We are passing all these three things into a constructor and instantiating a producer record. This object is our message and it should be given to producer so the producer can send it to Kafka broker. So as a final step, we make a call to send method on producer object and hand over the record object. That's it, we are done. Now it's producer's responsibility to deliver this message to the broker. After sending all your messages, you need to close the producer object. Closing a producer is necessary to clean up all resources that producer may be using. In a real life project, the producer is a long running process that keeps sending messages. But we took a simple example to understand the API. So that's it for the simple producer. You can compile it and execute it. You can use console consumer to test if the message reached the broker. The code utilized in this example is available in my Git repository and a link is available in description. Okay, so in this small program, we created two objects, Kafka producer and producer record. Let's quickly look at the Java docs for these two classes. So the Kafka producer gives you four variants of a constructor. They don't provide anything new, but only offer different methods to pass in your configuration values. If you look at the signature of send method, it returns you a Java future object of type record metadata. So this record metadata is a kind of acknowledgement from the broker. It contains information about your message. For example, the partition ID and offset number where the message resides. We will cover more details on acknowledgement in next session. Now let's look at the producer record object. So the producer record offers four variants of the constructor. We use this option and passed topic, key and value. But the second constructor is the most comprehensive option. It allows you to provide two more parameters partition number and timestamp. We will cover Kafka message partitioner in a separate session, but let me cover some basics here. Kafka comes with a default partitioner. This partitioner will use the message key to determine a partition number. So if you are sending few thousand messages with same message key, they all will land in the same partition. But you know that message key is optional. So if you don't send a message key, 
the default partitioner will evenly distribute those messages across the available partitions. But what about this parameter in the producer record? Okay. So if you set a partition number in your producer record, you will disable default partitioner. It is like you are hard coding a partition in your message itself and don't want Kafka to determine a suitable partition for your message. So if you hard code it to a zero, your message will go to a partition number zero. We will cover some usage of this parameter in later sessions. Now let's come to the timestamp. So Kafka gives a timestamp to every message. If you want to set a message timestamp before you send it to Kafka, you can use this parameter. If you don't set a timestamp, broker will set it when the message reaches to broker. It is important to note the difference. The former is the time when you are sending message to broker and later one is the time when the broker is receiving a message. Okay, that's it for this session. In next session, we will cover some more details of Kafka producer APIs. So see you again. Thanks for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.